Okay, so maybe we can go with group. So group one, do you have blockers or anything that you want to address from group one? If someone can beat, you can speak up. Group one, there are response. Any group one member? Uh, yes, uh, it's me, Abdurrahman. Uh, oh, thankfully, we, we don't have uh, any blockers. Uh, but uh, I was I have a question about uh, the JSON file the existing the task one in the documentation. So, an explanation yeah, on this would be helpful. Okay, and uh, can you take it? Uh, can you uh, repeat your question or? Um... Abdurrahman, if you can clarify your question. Yeah, uh, there is a... Okay, there is a, a part in task one. Uh, says create a dynamic, uh, simple JSON or any file. So I didn't get I didn't get this. So an explanation about it. Okay, that one is for uh, using as a config file. So you can use dot uh, ini files or dot json files to store your configuration. So every time there is a new config, you can your code you will use that json file and the for the next case or for the next config part the json file will be updated and the code will just use that file so the dynamic json refers to that and you can also create an a configuration file like which is both i and i and it's just for that purpose is that clear okay thank you uh, yeah it's kind of clear. So I have another question. Uh, how can I be sure that uh, this strategy is good or not? Uh, for the given uh, strategy? Yeah, uh, for yeah. back testing part, uh, how I can be? It's really hard to know. How I can, uh, it's really hard to know. So yeah. Basically, you have to try it. So while you are trying it, you'll get some uh, feedback or results. So in the actually applying it in real life, you, you, you can't really actually say it, say you have a chance because the whole uh, dynamics is volatile. So you just you just rely on the concept that it's like whatever works in the past will likely work in the present or in the future. You just rely on that, but you can't be hundred percent sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Group One. Is there anyone who can want to ask from Group One? In that case, let's move on to group two. Uh, that in bit, could you please uh, unmute and tell us if you have blockers or not? Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. You can go ahead. Yeah, uh, we don't have blockers so far, so for the questions. On the task five, is it required for to do all three of them, or are we doing? Are we choosing and sending only one, one of the three? Uh, okay, 
um okay well, maybe if i got it right uh, so as i mentioned last week uh if you actually have uh, managed to do all three that's great but try to start from uh one two and three so for example the first one would be to create uh, an algorithm that selects the big the best strategy and the next would be to create uh to use uh, i mean to create an index for the 10 crypto coins so the third would be creating a portfolio for the coin of coins using uh, mpt or modern portfolio theory so let's just try to manage to do all three but, uh, it depends on because uh, we all know the tasks the tasks are uh like my, my you might you guys might not be able to complete all of it but actually you have to uh, do your best and try to do all maybe if if that answers the question time is good Yes, 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 thank you. Okay, thank you, Tamaskan. Uh, group three, that indeed, if you can speak up. Michael, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, what is a mail flow? Like, how can we use that? in our project just use ml flow to track your uh, models so to track and to version your model so for example ml flow is one part of machine learning operation so ml loss so you you can up, use the actual any conventional strategies in ml ops by using a mail flow so you present your models and also you try to uh if you have time you might try to deploy them you might try to monitor those and also you might try to do some other tasks on it so it's just one one way of applying machine learning operations so that means if you if you if you have done the task the uh Otherwise, uh, we don't use it. Uh, so, if if you don't have any models, there is no point to use, to use ML flows. So this means you are not. So, for example, let's say uh, you are just in a design phase of your project. There is no reason to use DevOps, right? Or there is no need to apply DevOps there you're not actually developing it's just uh, the phase is not there yet so if you if you don't have any models if you haven't actually uh, reached the phase of for example let's say future engineering or any other uh, approach there is no point of using them okay thank you Okay, anyone from group three who want to add additional question for okay, thank you, group three. Let's move on to group four. Anyone who can confirm that they don't have question or have a question, please from group four. Anyone here from Group 4? Okay, Hilary. Okay, Hilary. Okay, good evening. So, good uh, afternoon. So, in the task three, there's CML integration to run various backtests. So, um, my question is, is that is that like ML flow? Uh, I haven't researched about it, but you could give me a pointer or the tool, tools to use for that. So the idea here is, so for example, let's say you have a certain strategy. Strategy. Uh, can you mute, Hilary? That is me. Okay, thank you. So let's say you have implemented some strategy, right? So you use Kafka for that part, and 
let's say for on the task that like you uh you publish the results into the database and also using kafka you you might uh, retrieve the results or uh, do a new result so the automated backtest runs on us like let's say you have airflow uh, orchestrated there and you have like running different kind of backtest backtest and savings and so in the end product when the user selects a certain strategy for the pain point if that's the, if that is the case you will just it will just directly return that result you don't need to run it over and over again so the ml flow and the cml part will come in for the automation for the automation and for the backtest part so for example let's say uh, you you are using uh, ml flow uh, to actually to automate tracking of your backtests so ml flow in this case will will be just to orchestrate or to use it as a tool in the workflow there is no machine learning model but as i've mentioned earlier i might i know it might be misleading but you have to see it in a way that let's say if you don't have a model there is no reason to use it as uh but as as uh, as a framework as, or as a tool but now you are running some tests or some back, te back tests and so you 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 use uh continuous machine learning or and also ml flow uh to run any other any any back tests so for example when you when you change uh any strategy when you change uh maybe the uh, sim the stock symbol of any of any change will be a new a new uh stream in kafka so you have to automate that part and also you should use ml flow just to track the back test. so which back tests are run and also which of uh what was the results and all you used ml flow and cml will run the various back tests and using github actions you will run, run test case on yeah, if there is any code change, so for example, if it implemented if, if, if any request is made or any commit is made. So maybe of to just to clarify on my previous re response for the ML flow part, uh, let's just use ML flow to monitor and to actually uh, automate the back testing runs. So you, you don't have any any models, but if you are if you actually manage to train your model okay that's fine that is a clear a clear way of using ml flow but for now you will use it to uh, to automate and to integrate your work testing result so for thomas Penn's question also it this will apply so if you have a pure machine learning algorithms you'll uh, track those and track any operations using ML flow. Oh, now, okay. since you don't have a pure machine learning one, but you have uh, a testing infrastructure, so you monitor those back testing infrastructures using ML flow and try to uh, run uh, tests using CML. Uh, is that clear? Time has gone in here. Go on, Hilary. My other question is on the index fund. Uh, so uh, when I go to our coin index, there there is a list of the the top coins, <coughs> and there and there's a lot of the volumes there uh, columns. I mean, like the the last price uh, volume. So when you are creating that index fund what do we really need like the columns if i also saw there's a different there's a different market index in in other in other sites so i'm confused like what the columns we need to display uh every like every updated month uh the volume the yeah things like that okay just for uh, this part, I think, uh, using the comments, one once would be uh, 
sufficient or not. So for example, let's say you have volumes, closing price, opening price and all in, uh, in most of the platforms. So you use those. So try to use the common ones. If, you, if there is one new thing on uh, one platform, applying it would actually complicate things more. So try to include the common ones. Before, thank you. If you have more questions, you can raise your hand. Okay, so that is let's move on to group five. That in lead, if you can speak up, or anyone from group five, if you can, there are some if you have any questions or not. Uh, from from experience, is it easier to create a a trading a trading board or an index fund for which one is it easier to create an index fund or a trading board or uh, which one would you uh, advise on? you create an index fund for a trading board index fund or a trading board uh, was index the fund for a trading board Make it pardon? Index fund for a trading board. That's fine for trading board. Uh, come again, uh, you, you say. Uh, yes, so uh, you, from the task, you, you have to do clear. <laughs> uh, from, from the task, we have the option to either create an index fund or a trading board. So my question is, uh, which one is well, which one takes less time from experience? Uh, maybe there. you, 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 yeah, no, I, I, maybe you can create a start from the trading board and it's just uh, you can continue to the index. So just start from whichever. You think is uh, feasible for for your current let's say for your current uh, team composition maybe so just try it. just try to see it in that way. okay okay yeah look at it thank you okay any other person from group five have a question so just to clarify here if you manage to do both which means if you actually try to implement or successful on implementing all three on the index fund or the trading of both parts that's great but start from one so as i explained the rest starts from the first task actually trying to uh orchestrate the as uh, 5.1 which means just creating an algorithm to select uh, the best part test strategy, which is a trading board. And if you are successful with that, just try to you do, do uh, the index in fund part. You might not be able to do both, or, which means you might not be able to do all the three. But just try, try your best here. But no, uh, for Hillary, uh, no, that that won't be for. So it's just uh, index fund or uh, trading books. So you, you'll you'll try to do as much as you can. Here. Sorry if, if uh, that confused. Any other question from Group 5? Okay, so let's move on to Group 6. That indeed, if you can speak up or anyone from Group 6. Okay, Enoch. Uh, okay, uh, I, I think Joseph was in my group. He was in Group 6. But uh, I also have just one question. Um, so my, my question is uh, the same with uh, Abdurrahman. The JSON uh, file we create, 
is it for the sole purpose of taking in uh, parameters? Uh, okay. On task on task one, yeah, yeah. So we integrate that with the front end, and we take parameters. Yeah, you store uh, config files or uh, instructions save, and you load those instructions. Uh, it's just to in order for you to understand. Uh, let's say the JSON file is created in, uh, another part of your uh, another part of your code or another part of your system, and the rest of the system uses that configuration and continue uh, with uh, with your platform. So it's just like for you guys to understand how to integrate dynamic JSON or dynamic configuration files like INI or in any file. Maybe it might be also a text file. You just store uh, your instructions clearly there. It might be it, it might be hard to read for a human, but your code actually has to interpret that and use it while to while implementing the rest of the system. Okay, so uh, if we do that, do we have to take out uh, the parameters that are in the code, or do we leave that and uh, uh, put the JSON in addition to that? Uh, you can implement it in a way like passing the parameters from the JSON file. So let's say you have one function to read the JSON file and uh, create the parameters in a way that the next function will understand. So you'll just pass or you'll just uh, give the, those arguments for the current or for the next function. So if your current function just loads the JSON file or the config file and prepares all the parameters in a way that uh, your, your, next, your next function or package will understand and just pass it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think I missed Joseph with group five. Uh, so then group six, thank you. Group five, like Javis, Niamu, CAT, you are the members. If you do you tell him one of you are here, please confirm if you have a question or not. Javis. Okay, uh, we are just working on how to integrating the front end, the back end, and uh, it's uh, I was having a hard time to uh, you know come up with a, a better question, but uh, maybe I will I will ask a Slack later because I am I'm, I'm confused on how to uh, say it or put it in a question. Thank you. Great. You can do that on the Slack. So, one data, you can go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the front end. Um, uh, what's the expectation of the user? Like, um, uh, like uh, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know exactly how to ask the question, but uh, on the front end, what are we supposed to display for for the user uh, to? To interact with that with 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 a, with a React application. I don't know. I don't know if if I first it if I re refreshed it well. Thomas, is that another question, or you are trying to answer uh, Martin's question? It is a question. And more, more elaborating. So, yeah, it's a question. Yeah, I can do this. Should I? Should I ask now? Okay, uh, you you can go next. Okay, for Ma Martin's question. Uh, Let's assume you are the end user and you have uh, trying to uh, 
um, invest on a coin or something like that. So, and th there are certain strategies you know, you you would like to test or try. So the you the infrastructure will just try to show you given different kind of uh, strategies and different kind of approaches, which one would be would would have a low risk and higher value. So in the gist of it would be like that. So in the interface and all the UX part, you have to come up with it. So for example, how to pick the coin, how to uh, pick the strategy, and how to pick uh, any of the other uh, parts. So for example, it might be debt and time, it might be strategies. So you you have to worry about the uh, UX part or the interaction part. But generally, it's just uh, try to show the backtesting result in in a in a way that the user understand it. Is that clear, Martin? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to go on. Yeah. Yeah. So just. It, it, it is kind of uh, I want a suggestion uh, for task five and task six. Are, are we doing a separate uh, interface? Like, it, like there is a, an interface like you explained for the, the bus testing, so the, the UI interface. Then for task uh, five, there will be a recommendation. For uh, five point one, and if you do five point one three, there is a, another context. So, should we do for, uh, the one interface for the back list, another one point five, and for the task six? I, I would like it if you more elaborate on how to do it. Um, how to tell on forecasting? Uh, forecasting if you. Explain more on, on that. So, option and the whole interface is your recommendation. So, uh, my recommendation here would be like uh, try to uh, try to be minimalistic on the on the UX part. So, for example, you don't actually show every results so it might be there, there are two types of results so important results and also somehow the result that is important for a normal person and the result that is important for the expert so try to have uh, let's say a section that has more info or more details so but you will show uh, the results that are somehow useful for all users but not for uh, for just for all users, but for the let's say for the more detailed results, you just try to uh, let's say maybe maybe make it collapsible or something like that. And also for the LLM for the forecasting part, and also you can just uh, try to do it in a tab. So, for example, after the result is loaded, the back testing result and other results are loaded, you will have a, t a tab. Uh, tab based page so for, which means like you will have forecast results and the back testing results in different tabs so the user can actually go through and change those that's just my uh, suggestion but just try to be minimalistic on the uh, UX part so the user can actually understand what is what he or she is saying Is that answer? Thomas, can you give us what? So I think we addressed all our groups. Uh, maybe add this one if you have any questions or not. So if you please. Um, no, I really have any questions. Now I'm uh, working on the back, this, the back in the fasting period part. I'm trying to send the. Uh, Data from the front end to the back end. Okay, great. Thank you. So, anyone with a left 
question, please, you can go ahead. Raise your hand. Okay, Michael. Uh, how, if you explain, like, how can we use Airflow in this project? Okay, uh, you can implement Airflow to orchestrate all the, all the backstage tasks. So you, you monitor, let's say you are monitoring it or you are trying to automate it using MLflow. So you uh, will try to use DAX and other Airflow tools to actually uh, automate everything. So the main reason we use Airflow is to track and monitor the automation, right? So we will try to uh, see what backtesting uh, uh, is being uh, run and how the results are uh, actually uh, being transferred to Kafka and and other things. So if 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 you if you implemented Airflow, great. If not, you can actually do it in, in a raw Python format. So let's say you are using uh, so in a database and you are storing your uh, let's say you are uh, you are just running a backtest using uh, an entry based on a database. So you can use it using your pure Python. But using Airflow is the most recommended part for the automation part. And you just can use uh, MLflow, try to actually see the results and everything. And using CML, you can run continuous machine learning part. Not for the machine learning part, but for to actually check, uh, check the change for every uh, results for every code change. Let's say it might be for a pull request, or it might be for a commit, or it might be for a merge. Based on uh, what you think is is it is that clear, Michael? Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, go on, Hilar. Go on, Hilar. Uh, okay, on the results, we we have let's say like maximum drawdown. So it's um it's a big number decimal. So to to make the user understand, uh, I don't think my understanding is that we should not assume the user knows what those mean. So should we make it easier for them to understand? Like in this case, maybe convert it to a percentage, the total return, and uh, you know something like that, or, and also include that one if they are if they are familiar yeah just try to uh, use what you have just mentioned so for example if the uh, if they want it they can see the the, the whole number the whole digits and if not you can just use it uh, all the other as uh, a percentage Other questions, left questions? Is that okay? If not, if you have anything to say to them, you can take over. Other than that, I think we can end the session. Uh, I don't really have anything to say. So if you have any question, just uh, drop it on Slack and yeah, make sure to collaborate clearly on this one. And you will have a presentation. So don't forget about that too. So Thursday and Friday, it will be announced. But on Thursday and Friday, you'll have a presentation. So make sure to work as a group and every make sure every member of the group is participating. Yeah. Yeah, the, the deadline has it been extended to Saturday or is it still on Wednesday? It is on Wednesday. Uh, you submit your final submission on Wednesday, and for Thursday and Friday, you will have a presentation and you'll rest Thursday and I mean Saturday and Sunday. Okay.
Okay, so that being paid, I think we can end the recording. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Good afternoon.